Yeah. So we have um, for tonight, we're going to talk about some, some things that have uh, definitely have stirred up a lot of controversy. Um, there are a lot of, uh, you know, ideas on what spiritual warfare means and also how to, how to deal with it and how to um, be made whole in Christ or to move on from um, past wounds. And um, yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about um, all these things. It's kind of like a general overview, but I have a question and, and this is more of a rhetorical question. Um, but do you guys think that a Christian can be possessed? And that's a trick question. Can a Christian be possessed? So the reason why I kind of ask that is because um, in, in American culture, which is not like much of the rest of the world, but in American culture, we, we tend to um, see things as either you're, you're oppressed or possessed. So if you're oppressed, it means you're a Christian and you can have spiritual, uh, you know, spiritual forces affect you. Or if you're, um, you know, the, the other than it's, you know, if you're non-Christian. But um, the reality is like, I've, I've seen a lot of um, uh, things on a personal basis, but then also like I, I'll see things in scripture. But let me just tell you a couple of stories just with uh, Nathan. So Nathan and I, uh, we've had our fair share of very weird spiritual warfare experiences. Um, one of our first ones was, and not by an evil spirit, nice. <laughs> um, so we, we had um, this one encounter with a, with a student one time. And it was in, it was in um, youth group. And for whatever reason, there, the student could not speak at all, just was totally mute, couldn't communicate at all, just, just totally like clenched jaw and, and everything, even though the individual was trying to speak. And um, we tried all sorts of stuff, just trying to um, get get rid of whatever was affecting, you know, the student, but nothing really seemed to be working. And so both of us were like, wow, this is weird. Like, I can't believe this, this is like, so this is a real thing, you know? And there was this other time where I met up with Nathan, uh, kind of near your guys' church, and we grabbed lunch. And then we see this black suburban just pulled over to the side of the street along the curb, um, except the driver's not in the car. The driver got out of the car and was sitting on the curb. And, um, and then Nathan and I kind of go over and then Nathan starts holding the guy and then he just um, goes limp. I mean, like totally like a limp noodle, almost as if all the bones were taken out of his body and just uh, totally just like flopped on the ground just like that. And then Nathan <laughs> like tries to hold him. We're trying to pray over him. And um, yeah, in, in Playa del Rey. And, and so we're, we're trying to, we're trying to pray over this guy. Um, but he just, he'll, he'll kind of just like start laughing maniacally, kind of like the Joker, or, you know, kind of like a crazy, crazy individual. And then he would like start to walk away from the scene because he, he kind of crashed his car. And then we'd be like, no, no, man, like come back. And then um, he kept, he kept fainting over and over on the ground. And so Nathan and I were just like totally um, confused as to what was happening. Um, so, so sometimes we may see like some pretty wild spiritual, uh, encounters and sometimes not so much, but, um, you know, in terms of, in, in terms of thinking about spiritual warfare, um, the, one of the, one of the biggest things is, is just to realize our authority in Christ. Uh, so as a Christian, um, being in Christ, uh, it means that we we have access to Christ's authority and power. So Colossians uh, 2.15 is one of the biggest um, spiritual warfare passages or verses because it says, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, triumphing over them by the cross. So in other words, um, because of Jesus' death for us and his resurrection, that means that uh, we being united to, to Jesus, we now have authority over these things. Um, but here's what's interesting is that in our church lately, and, and I come from a, a Baptist church, so, you know, the whole uh, maybe theatrical experience with demons isn't very, you know, seen in this den denomination compared to others. And I would assume probably yours as well, maybe not so much uh, compared to some other denominations, but what was interesting is that all of a sudden God seems to be doing all this work in which he's helping people be freed of whatever spiritual forces are um, having influence over them. And what was happening is, 
we start noticing crazy things. So like I'll be praying over someone and all of a sudden they just go catatonic and just fall on the ground. We had that happen at one worship night. We're praying for, for someone and um, yeah, it wasn't like anything like bodily related or, or chemical imbalance or anything. It was, it was like in the moment we were, you know, we prayed for her in Jesus name and then all of a sudden just went, went blank. Um, and then there are other, all sorts of other people that we've been praying over and all of a sudden they'll just start shaking uncontrollably or they'll hear loud voices. Um, so, so all of a sudden we're starting to see all these very kind of otherworldly experiences and just like, wow, this is, this is so strange. This is not like, this is not normal. Um, but I think, I think for each one of us, the, uh, we probably have had some weird spiritual encounters, maybe some, some, um, you know, spiritual attack. But the reality is that that Satan um, can have access to us in order to influence us, and sometimes to pretty great degrees. So for for Acts five, when it talks about Ananias was was lying to the early church, uh, basically Peter says, um, you know, why why have you? Um, well, basically, like why have you kind of let Satan fill your heart, and then you've lied to the Holy Spirit about the money you had? So it's kind of this idea that um, that that the enemy can still influence us. And there, there are lots of different avenues for that to happen. Um, basically, it kind of works like this. So, so for, a, for a Christian, um, we have like a new spirit, right? So we have like a new heart, we, like God makes a new heart. But what are some of the other components of being a human? Um, what are, like, what, what else makes up a human being other than just my, my eternal spirit? What would you guys say? Body. Good. Body. Yeah, that's good. That's one of the four. Um, body. What are some other um, components of being a human being? Mind. Mind. Great. Great. So our mind, how we, our rationalization. Yeah. There are two more. What else? So. Yeah, you, good. So soul or emotions. Yeah, so that's good. Um, and spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So I would say spirit is uh, kind of like the primary core of who we are. Um, so yeah, so yeah, basically, I guess you could say five, including spirit. And then the last one is will. So like your, you know, if you say I, I have no will to do something, you know, that's kind of that component. So basically, as a Christian, um, the spirit is is changed, we have a new, we have a new um, being, you know, we're a new creation in Christ. So so that component of us can not be uh, affected, but all these other components could be areas of spiritual attack or basically access for demons to try to influence or, or torment and bother us. Um, you can almost kind of think of our past baggage being like a bunch of garbage. And then depending on how much garbage we have still kind of to deal with, the rats are kind of like the demons that feed off of that. Um, and basically the whole process of getting rid of spiritual um, influences is having to deal with the garbage inside uh, that comes with it. So uh, one of the biggest things that we've had to work through and help everyone identify is, are the different gateways for spiritual influence to happen. Um, so one of, one of those is uh, unforgiveness. That's one of the biggest issues that we've noticed is that when, if someone holds on to unforgiveness, uh, it can be a pathway for the enemy to be able to have access to them, um, to lie to them, to influence them, to manipulate them. Um, so unforgiveness is a really big one. And, you know, Jesus talks about that uh, pretty extensively. But um, what do you think are some other gateways for spiritual warfare to happen? Uh, sexual brokenness. Yeah, good. Good. So good, Joseph. So yeah, so so sexual brokenness, um, yeah, just even, uh, you know, the you know, Bible talks about not letting there even be, be a hint of sexual immorality. So, um, yeah, just kind of jumping full-fledged into that could be, could be a, an avenue for the enemy to have influence over us, yeah, even as Christians. So what are some other ones? Witchcraft. Yeah, good. Witchcraft. So um, any involvement with the occult, um, basically like if you're into new age stuff or, uh, 
Ouija boards, um, dream catchers, like any, any of those sorts of occultic practices or um, things of that nature, uh, dowsing you can use with like crystals and, and those sorts of stuff. Um, those are all like pathways and gateways for the enemy to be able to influence us. And so, um, so yeah, that's, a, that's another big one. Um, some of the others include uh, just continued anger. So if you have like just kind of perpetual anger, because you know, Ephesians 4, 26 talks about in your anger, don't sin, but, and don't let the sun go down while you're angry and don't get the devil a foothold. Um, pride's another one in James 4. It says, you know, basically, it's essentially like um, just humble yourselves uh, in order to not let the devil um, you know, have, have influence on you. Um, there are a few others like rebellion. So, so even in 1 Samuel 15, it talks about rebellion being like the sin of di divination. So it's kind of like um, if there's like a, a constant um, propensity to be rebellious, uh, that can be a gateway for the enemy. And the, one of the last ones is generational. So what we've noticed is like when we work with people and they, they, they talk about all sorts of horrible experiences they have, like they keep hearing voices or, you know, they just feel stuck in their faith. They feel like they're not growing. They feel like just like a crappy Christian or, you know, they just feel like they're, yeah, just kind of stuck. Um, many times, yeah, it, it could also be generational because um, in a lot of uh, cultural practices, um, it, you know, especially even, uh, you know, with my background, you know, my, my grandparents had a shrine in their house and they pray to ancestors and, um, you know, that sort of thing. And so, so there, there seems to also be some sort of inheritance aspect um, to spiritual, uh, negative spiritual influence. Um, so yeah, so let me, um, sorry if that was like kind of boring and just generally informational, um, but I just kind of wanted to set the ground rules for like actually how to um, help people like including yourselves, uh, actually work through some of these things. But um, do you guys have any questions so far about any of this? No? Pretty straightforward. Anything you disagree with? Okay. All right. So here's how this works. Um, this may surprise you, but actually many Christians uh, can be pretty um, affected by the spiritual realm. And what I mean by that is, I think so many times as Christians, we think that, oh, this is just my lot in life. This is just how it's going to be. I just need to deal with it. So I remember when I was uh, about your age, I was um, like college and later, early 20s, you know, something like that. And, um, you know, for many of you, I know that's uh, college year, but so when I was at that age, I, I just had so many things that I just couldn't seem to get over. Like I was constantly struggling with pride, constantly struggling with like just beating myself up incessantly. Um, uh, yeah, just like, just very sensitive to lust and like, uh, just felt like at any point, you know, I could fall and, uh, you know, just, just not be able to get out of that. Um, There's just so many things I was like, man, the Christian life is so difficult. Why does it have to be like this? Um, and then one day I was getting prayer and, uh, I, I was getting prayer for, from a pastor and, and two friends and they were praying over me cause they detected maybe there's some spiritual warfare happening. And what happened was as I was, I was getting prayer, um, almost immediately, uh, you know, uh, they were praying over me for Jesus to come and, and help and, and, and free me from whatever bondage was happening. All of a sudden my nose just starts bleeding all over the carpet. Um, and, and it's like a, this, I was at Rock Harbor. It's a, it's a, it was like a brand new office, with brand new carpet and everything. And I'm just like, like I literally bleeding, like out of my nose onto the carpet. And, and the, and the blood is like kind of black. Um, I don't know how to describe it to you. It's kind of like a little, it was like thicker and like black. I'm like, what the frick is happening? Like this, this does not happen. This is like a freaking circus show. Right. And then, and then the pastor who's praying over me is like, oh, don't worry, it's normal. I'm like, this is not normal, this is crazy. Um, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, what was happening was there was, there was demonic influence that was manifesting and challenging what was happening because I didn't realize I had so much bondage, um, so much spiritual like influence from the enemy. It's, it's kind of like this. When you have two puppets, there's one puppet that is uh, kind of like the hand through the back and you can move the mouth. It has complete control over someone. So um, 
So that's like kind of one complete control, especially someone who's not a Christian. Now, if someone is a Christian, you can still almost still be a puppet, but you have a bunch of little strings attached to you. Um, but it can still exert control over you. And so that's really how I felt. I felt like, man, I, I just can't get victory in some of these areas. I keep trying to fight it, I keep trying to win, I keep losing. Um, and eventually what happened was uh, after that, I was like, I, I, I felt totally, I mean, we dealt with some of those issues that were holding me back. But um, after that, uh, I felt like a huge weight lift off of me. I was like, wow, I can't believe I was living with that for so long. And I just thought that was normal, right? Um, so here's what's interesting is that many Christians actually experience this. And um, I would assume actually some, if not maybe many of you also can experience this to a degree. Um, so some of it, you know, it comes from deep hurt that we have in the past. Um, and, and the way to deal with it uh, is, is actually pretty simple. We just um, pray with people and we, we just kind of use some very basic biblical principles. Um, but let me, let me explain to you kind of how this works. So um, there is a gift uh, in the Bible. It's called discernment of spirit. Some people, they misinterpret that as just discernment, like, oh, like I have wisdom. But that's like another gift is like wisdom, right? So discernment of spirits is something different. Um, I would imagine maybe at least one of you, if not more, maybe actually have this gift. It's where you can like see, sense, feel, or experience the spiritual realm. Uh, would any of you say that you have that gift, perhaps? It's actually kind of rare, but um, does anyone say they would have that? Sort of. I see Jennifer kind of like, I think, I think so. Okay. So, um, so here's what happens with this gift. Uh, let me, I, I just feel like story time. Is that okay? Story time. Um, so, <laughs> so, so here's one moment where uh, we're, there's a woman in our small group, right? And she's talking about like, oh man, I had um, I had this these really bad nightmares. And I was like, oh really? Like how long have you been having them? Or like, you know, like three months, whatever. What are the nightmares? Oh, it's just like me like hanging in blood and all this stuff. And like, oh, that sounds really bad. Um, yeah, it sounds like maybe it's like spiritual, like warfare perhaps. And she's like, oh really? And then, um, so then um, basically like, as we were talking to her, um, one of the girls, actually could sort of detect that there was a demonic entity affecting her. And so what, what we did was we said, okay, everyone get out of the room. And it was just like me, uh, the girl, and then um, two people. And then um, we, we basically just tested the spirits. So what that means is you are actually challenging whatever entity could be affecting someone. So that comes from First John 4, 1 through 3. It's, it's don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are from God. Um, so that whole concept is like, like, um, basically you're going to challenge whatever spirit could be wor at work in someone. So it kind of works like this. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Is it right? Right. Evan says I do. Oh, cool. Okay. So, um, having this sort of gift helps, helps the process along to help bring freedom and deliverance to Christians who are struggling with spiritual warfare. Um, it's kind of like I could do it. It just takes me five hours to do it because I'm doing it blindly and I could like ask a bunch of questions and try to figure it out. And usually in order to partner with someone alongside me, um, it'll help like the process go by faster. So basically what happens is we sit down and we test the spirit. So I say, in the name of Jesus, I command any evil spirit that's at work and so-so to reveal itself. Um, and I usually also say, don't manifest um, because I've actually heard of crazy manifestations. Like I have one, um, one guy that's been mentoring me a little bit and he said, one time a guy literally was levitating off the ground. Um, I've heard of levitations happening before. I've heard of, um, I mean, you heard about like my bloody nose being one. Uh, people will throw up, uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, and so, or like flop on the floor like a fish or all kinds of things like that. Um, and so all you just need to say is like, I command you to not manifest in the name of Jesus. And so that stops like, or at least hopefully should stop whatever the manifestation is. So at least in our church lately, and keep in mind, this is a, this is a Baptist church. Like we don't do this stuff. Right. Um, but I, we've done it on so many people, like probably 50, 60 people within the last year. It's been on like hyperdrive. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll do this. We'll test the spirit and some of them will just start shaking uncontrollably or they'll have like horrible pain and like a horrible like headache or something. Um, and, and that's like, you know, kind of the spirit that's at work in them kind of manifesting. 
Um, so what we do, we just say, okay, stop in the name of Jesus and you're, you're restrained. Okay. So then now, you know, you got to deal with it. Now there are different philosophies on how to get rid of an, the influence of an evil spirit. Some say, oh, just kick it out and, and, and then do the, do the healing or getting rid of the garbage. Um, my personal opinion is it's hard to sometimes just kick them out because they have reason to be there, especially if they feel like they have legal ground to be there. Like if someone has opened up those gateways, like unforgiveness or, you know, yeah, bitterness and witchcraft and all this stuff. Right. Um, so what has to happen is these, these, uh, these gateways have to be closed. Um, so, so there usually has to be some sort of renunciation of whatever allowed access in the first place. Um, so oftentimes there's confession uh, of sin, or there is um, just just I'm you know as a Christian I'm 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 claiming the blood of Jesus and I'm renouncing things. Um, so we so usually what we do. Um, oh, I forgot to mention this, but even before the process, like we'll kind of sit down with someone, and sometimes we also allow the gift of prophecy to come in. So so what that means is we'll just kind of sit and just like Lord, where, like how do you want to work in so and so's life? Like what do you want to reveal? Sometimes we'll actually get information. Um, without even asking them. So one time we were praying for someone, we started out and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, were you sexually assaulted when you were younger? Oh yeah, I was. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so that gives us some like, like a place to work, work through. So sometimes we just open up with prayer. Then we test the spirits. Um, oftentimes there is some sort of spiritual influence and we, and we restrain it in the name of Jesus. Okay. So you test the spirits. Um, after that, uh, once that once you can restrain the spirit, sometimes actually there's there's some fighting that happens and there's some squirming, uh, and so so sometimes you may have to have the person like try to literally vocalize like in the name of Jesus I command you to stop, um, and but there are other times where they can't even get the words out, so that's also um, that that's kind of an, a pretty intense situation. But um, yeah, over time you you just have to have the person call out to Jesus like as a first step. If, if they're really heavily influenced. So you just have them call it to Jesus and Jesus, I, I just need your help. Um, and usually at that point, that could be um, a breakthrough moment. Uh, and then, then once, then once the, the spirits are restrained, you can actually do the inner healing process. Um, inner healing is a very vast subject. Uh, sometimes the term is misunderstood or misconstrued. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about what, what that even means. So basically you get rid of the garbage through inner healing or deep healing. Some people refer to it as, and then once all the garbage is gone, then the spirits don't have any more power or influence over someone. And you can just get rid of them very easily often. Um, the other problem though, with removing demons is that there's a hierarchy. So, um, in order to get rid of de demonic influence in people, uh, you have to find out which one's the most powerful. Uh, which one has the most authority and the problem is they like to play games so um we usually don't um there are different philosophies on this some people actually prefer that they have the demons speak through the person um we're not necessarily like all about that but what we do is we say okay well whatever spiritual entity i i you know community to communicate to so and so uh, and use the person as like the media the middleman or the conduit um and then basically you can you can kind of just uh, go through the motion, have the person um, just relay to you like what what is going on. Like sometimes they'll hear, like I did when my nose was bleeding all over the place. I heard like a bunch of people like screaming in my head, um, and then I could like communicate that to the people praying for me. Um, what's going on? Uh, has anyone freaked out yet? Uh, I'm getting into the to the crazy part here. So are you guys doing okay? You guys spooked yet? And I I noticed no one's hopped off, so that's at least encouraging. Um, <laughs> this is where, okay, this is where like things hit the fan. Cause honestly in Western Christianity, this is very underground. Um, and I would say in Western Christianity, this is not very well known. Um, and the reason why is because Satan likes to hide kind of like cockroaches under rocks. Um, and so basically like if I talk to other Christians in other countries, like I talk to a, a Christian missionary in a really rough part of Africa. And he's like, oh yeah, you're doing everything fine. Yeah, that's how it is. Uh, or I'll talk to like, you know, missionary from Indonesia and like, oh yeah, you're, you know, that's how it works. And I'm like, dude, I think, I think there's something wrong with Western Christianity. I think we're missing a huge component of when you look at the gospels and how Jesus dealt with demons. I'm like, dude, I think we're missing something. Cause like, I think our Christianity seems to be missing certain components of 
like inner healing and spiritual warfare. And, and it's not like these are unbiblical things. Like these are, these are kind of just very basic, I think, like when you look at scripture. Um, okay, so, so let me talk about, um, okay, so once you can remove the demons, we usually just have Jesus edify the person and confirm their calling. And he often can tell them what their gifts are. Uh, so that's the inner, that's the whole process. Like that's basically what we've been doing with people. Sometimes it takes multiple sessions. It's taken as many as 10. It's taken as little as one. Um, you know, we've had some very dramatic results. Some have taken a lot longer. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of been the process and it's been kind of a circus, honestly. Uh, but, but it's, but it's been good. And so for, okay, let me talk about inner healing. So inner healing just means I'm working through all the, all the garbage in my life uh, that comes from past hurt from people, my bitterness, just anything that's like seems to be a reoccurring thing in my life. I need, I need to get rid of it. So um, basically it works like this. So we either have three categories of ungodly judgments, uh, God against ourselves or against other people. So this is where all the inner healing takes place. Um, so I'm going to resolve any issues I have with God. Maybe I'm disappointed with God. Maybe I hate God. Maybe I feel like he wasn't there when I was raped or molested or, you know, all these other things that I've been helping people process through with. Um, those are issues with God they'll have to work through. Uh, secondly, um, is there anything against myself that I hate? Do I hate myself? Is, is there anything about my appearance I hate? Is there anything about my personality I hate? Uh, do I beat myself up? You know, those are all things to work through with inner healing. And the third thing is, do I have anything with other people, especially like instances, like maybe even traumatic instances in which I was harmed by someone and I just can't get over it. Like it just, it just, it just uh, gives me PTSD. It's like really weighing on me, you know? So we all have uh, different moments like that. Um, the way to uh, bring about the inner healing is first to um, uh, basically renounce the entrances of the spirit. So it could be like, um, could be just any of those portals that we talked about earlier. But um, one of the biggest things that we've noticed is there are actually also three techniques to help with these three areas of inner healing. So again, God, self, and others. They're actually kind of by accident. We've, we've almost like learned how to do this. Um, again, this isn't something that like Nathan and I were totally formally taught on. Like we've got little snippets here and there. Um, but some of this kind of has just come through weird experiences. So um, the first thing that we've noticed is like, in order to resolve any issues with God, we usually ask someone to picture in their mind a, a safe place. So it could be like the beach for me or your home for you or something like that. So, um, so usually it's like, okay, uh, yeah, just picture a safe space. Okay, I'm at the beach. Okay, now invite Jesus into that safe space. Um, oftentimes people can see Jesus or maybe there's some sort of distortion or maybe he's far away or maybe uh, caricatured, you know, something where it seems like maybe he's there, but a little off, um, that could be a good indication that, that someone needs to work through any issues they have with God. Um, and usually, however they kind of picture Jesus can be an indicator of that. Now, I will say not everyone is visual or, um, you know, uh, thinks maybe in that manner. Um, and that's okay. Uh, sometimes if someone isn't very, like, visual in terms of uh, imagining things like that, um, we can just like kind of sit with them and then sometimes they'll just get like a whisper or an impression from Jesus and that, that could help the process. But um, so anyway, we usually have that happen. Uh, and then, and then we allow Jesus to, to do, do whatever he wants to do. Sometimes he actually shows like what the issues are. Um, and so, so that's, that's one thing to resolve with the Lord. You know, if anyone has any issues with God or they feel like disappointed. Um, so they work through with that. Okay. And then with the self, usually what we do, once they can see Jesus, um, we have them write down everything they hate about themselves, which oftentimes is a very long list, but we just wait, you know, just let people write out everything they hate. <laughs> Could be a page, two pages, whatever, just write everything out. Um, and usually the, the, we ask them to give it to Jesus, okay? And so um, in that moment, Jesus will probably do something with it. Um, I've heard of a myriad of things that he does, and it usually kind of surprises the person. They're like, wait, what just happened? That's, that's really cool. Um, but usually it's a very like edifying experience for them. They're like, wow, like that's how Jesus thinks about it. Like he just doesn't care. Um, sometimes we ask for an exchange too. So we'll ask Jesus, Lord, can you, can you give me a gift? And sometimes um, in those moments, like in prayer, he can actually um, give someone a gift that 
communicate something very specific to them that uh, just speaks very, very closely to their heart. Um, so people have pictured like all sorts of stuff, like getting a ring or, um, uh, you know, maybe some sort of toy that they remember or uh, a child or uh, different things like that. Like, like Jesus will sometimes give a gift in that manner. Okay. So, so after that, then we also work through any issues with others. So what we usually do is ask the person, can you picture, uh, or like, do you feel like you have to work through any unforgiveness with someone? Is there anyone that has hurt you? Any, any issues you got to work through? Um, and we ask them like, Hey, can you picture like your father's face? Okay. I'm gonna picture my father's face. Oh, I see the devil. Okay. It means you maybe need to work through any issues with your dad, uh, or, you know, with your mom or your, your brother or your sister or your neighbor or your friend or, you know, any, any person, you know, so you kind of like work through that. And usually what happens is at the end of the process of being able to work through forgiveness, confession of what happened, um, usually the person can come to a place where the person, like their face changes in a, in a positive way, the way they think about them. And that's usually an indicator that it worked. Also, um, there are moments where it's not by intentional sin, but it's just like a deep pain. So, so like when it comes to rape or molestation or uh, domestic abuse, you know, things that are very severe of that nature. Um, usually what we do is we ask Jesus uh, to come into those moments and he'll usually do something very significant for someone. Um, and he'll actually be in that moment and he'll, uh, he'll, he'll get rid of the lie that he somehow wasn't there. Um, there'll be some sort of, tr I'll give an example. So there's one woman, woman we were praying for, she was molested when she was three and her dad like allowed it to happen uh, in like a van outside of the home uh, with like the dad's friend. And basically like, so she's getting molested in the van, right? And then, but, um, but then she, she totally can't see Jesus. She just is like, I, like Jesus forgot about me. So we went, okay, let's, let's get out of that really bad memory that really traumatized you. Let's go back to uh, your experience with Jesus in the safe place and just ask him, Lord, where were you in that moment? And then Jesus would say, I was outside talking to your dad and convinced, trying to convince him to stop it. And then she'll be like, oh my gosh, like, okay. And then she'll kind of go back and then all of a sudden she'll be able to see Jesus talking to the dad. And then, and then she remembers, oh my gosh, I do remember he came in and, and stopped it, but it was later, you know, but, but I do remember him like coming in and like ceasing whatever happened. Um, so usually there are moments like that where, where we allow, like in, in these very traumatizing scenarios, like we just allow Jesus into those memories, uh, no matter how painful they are. And sometimes, yeah, like people will be like a hot mess, just sobbing their eyes out uncontrollably. And, you know, that's okay, but that's really how they feel. And that's how they've been bottling up their, their feelings for decades, you know? And so, um, so that's okay. And the whole point is like, just it's kind of like surgery, you know, for an infection, you know, you got to like get in there, lance it and like, like spill out all the crap, right. And then get rid of all of it. And then, uh, you know, sew it back up. So that's kind of like what, what you're doing spiritually is um, letting people like just get all their crap out, you know, just, just unload um, everything, you know, and just let Jesus heal. And what's crazy is that, yeah, spiritual surgery. Perfect. Um, so, so, so that's, that's kind of the process um, yeah, in terms of like how to actually go about it, I mean, you know, I could spend like probably forever, like talking about all these different, um, concepts, uh, but, but here's some really good books I put in the chat. Uh, one of them I actually haven't read. So I, I usually try not to recommend books I haven't read, but it was like highly recommended to me, which is Free in Christ by Pablo Batari. Um, but yeah, Charles Kraft, like he, he has written so many books on spiritual warfare and inner healing. And so I highly recommend that. Um, Tom Sappington was a missions pastor, uh, when we went to school. Did you have him, Nathan? I don't remember. You didn't. Okay. So, um, so he wrote a book on judgments, which is kind of like the inner healing process. Um, Jack Deere kind of gives a theological background for, uh, kind of like spiritual warfare and spiritual gifts. And, um, yeah, bondage breakers are pretty well-known one by Neil Anderson. He was kind of well-known for at least providing some sort of biblical framework for uh, deliverance ministry. So yeah, those are some resources, but uh, I know we were going to have some breakout groups. I know I said a lot of uh, maybe weird and perplexing things to you, um, things that maybe you hadn't heard before. And honestly, like I've honestly just learned in the last year. Uh, <laughs> we just kind of uh, just went with it. But um, you guys have any questions or anything like, I don't know, any clarification? I mean, I'd love to 
answer some of those things maybe before we go into our breakout groups. Any, um, you mentioned, you mentioned you just come across this in the past half year. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned that you went to town, um, uh, Iola or Talbot, mm -hmm. and that's a conservative school. So how did you get exposed to these, aside from the story that you mentioned about, right. um, your bloody nose and about yeah. the man that was coming out of the black suburban, right. how, aside from that, was there any prior instances that you were exposed to? I, yeah, I would say, um, what I, what I experienced was, um, well, Tom Sappington, he's actually on there and he was one of the, 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 the he, so he was the professor I had at the time when that uh, spiritual attack moment happened with my bloody nose. So it's kind of like all at once I was like firsthand experiencing what was going on and I was getting some like theological background as to why I'm going through what I'm going through. So it, it was almost like, I mean, I think it was a total God thing just how that all happened all at once. Um, but yeah, it, it helped provide at least some, some groundwork. And then, um, basically since that time, um, I've had certain moments of being able to try to do, uh, so-called deliverance ministry. Um, but it's been very like here and there, and there hasn't really been like too much of a concerted effort to like jump all in and, and let's just try it on everyone. <laughs> um, it's more of like, okay, it'll, like someone will say, oh man, I'm like so, struggling so bad spiritually. And then like, okay, let's go through, go, go, go for it and like work through it. Um, so, so, so there've been a few moments like that where I've done some deliverance ministry. Um, but I think because of, I don't know, I guess what's been happening lately, there's just been such like, uh, uh, so much spiritual warfare happening. It's kind of just led to us just having to do it on so many people. And then now it's to the point where I can start to detect little things and I'm like, oh, that's spiritual attack. Okay, do you want to like actually pray through this? And then they'll be like, oh yeah, let's try it out. And then it ends up actually being a thing, you know? So, so I think more and more I'm, I'm noticing like, okay, let's, let's, just, let's just try it out. And maybe there's nothing, maybe they're crickets, you know, and that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of, uh, oh, I mean, even, even still, like, I'm sure some of you have had weird spiritual attack experiences. So even before the, before this last, you know, year, um, you know, I've had like weird experiences, like I've heard like weird growling and almost like hooves, uh, outside my door, even though there are no horses around here. Um, but that was actually more in my parents' house near the beach, but uh, kind of where you guys are. And then, um, like I wake up with scratches all over my back or, uh, I had sleep paralysis one time. So yeah, sometimes like I've had these, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you guys have had some, some weird experiences too, and maybe some of you not, which is okay. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's amazing how weird some of these experience and phenomena are, but yeah, that's kind of my, kind of my background with that. So yeah, thanks for the question, Carrie. Any other questions about this circus show I'm talking about? <laughs> um, some, some in our culture would uh, explain like some of the homeless, they would speak, they would just speak out mm -hmm. and they would classify that as a uh, mental illness. Mm -hmm. uh, would you classify those that are speaking to themselves and usually in a very mm -hmm. anger angrily way if that's a word but also with a lot of uh, foul language would you would you would you say that they would be possessed great question um this is probably something I, I ought to have clarified earlier so they're basically um not everything is spiritual attack and not everything is just chemical imbalance um so so i would say like uh there are there are legit like solutions for certain mental illness that is not spiritual warfare related like if someone needs lithium take lithium uh you know there's not a, any amount of prayer that's going to fix your fix your lithium problem unless like jesus mirac miraculously fixes that specific issue through a healing but um yeah so like if there's some sort of chemical imbalance like yeah if you, if you need to be on anxiety meds or you know depression meds like you know clinical depression um you know those are those are like legit like yeah, medical issues that need to be dealt with in that manner. Um, and also like sometimes just, just having cognitive therapy. I've been through cognitive therapy for a year. Uh, I found that to be very helpful. And so that's also a viable solution. Um, but the other component, the third component, and I think why there's such a huge 
quote unquote mental illness issue is because there's a lot of spiritual warfare that's not really dealt with. Um, so I think, I think for the homeless, I think maybe there's a combination. Uh, it's either maybe one or the other or both, right? So it's, pro I mean, I know that there are a lot of like clinically mentally ill people um, because uh, out there's like supposedly twice as many mentally ill out there, but uh, half the amount of facilities to be able to accommodate them. So we do have like a legit like clinical mental illness problem in this country, but also we have, um, yeah, like a lot of, a lot of, uh, I, I definitely know of a lot of um, spiritual warfare things that I've heard. I mean, I heard of one, one, one guy I knew and he, he would, that was kind of jacked up, but he would go around to the homeless and just say, hey, Su Cristo to all of them and see if they would like spaz out. Um, and he said like some would, and I was like, that's not cool. But <laughs> yeah, so I think there's definitely, you know, spiritual warfare as a, as a component, um, especially for homeless population. Yeah. So, yeah. Great questions, Carrie. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Anna, you're asking about a, is that a question about a near death experience or is that more of a comment? Uh, both actually. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. Good question. I think, See, I, I, there, I do know of someone in our church who's had a near-death experience and, um, and actually interacted with Jesus, sort of, um, for the, the amount of time that they weren't uh, alive. But, um, yeah, honestly, I, I, I can't say decisively if that is completely a spiritual, um, spiritual warfare component. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's actually a great question. I honestly don't know the answer. Um, Maybe in one of the future books I'll read, it'll cover it. But um, yeah, I'm not, not too positive. It, was that maybe a personal experience for yourself? Or is that just more of a general question? Um, personal. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, because I, I know of some near-death experiences where like, there seems to be commonality in what people experience. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm sure maybe I, I could totally imagine, you know, if, uh, you know, there could be spiritual warfare accommodating or being a part of some of those experiences. Yeah, that's a great point. Other questions, comments, thoughts? I have a question. Okay, what's up, Raven? Um, I was like, just thinking, I'm like, how can you be so chipper when you talk about this? <laughs> You're just okay, like so. a very bubbly chipper person. <laughs> I think because, um, so this, this, that's actually a great question because I think it does bother some people. Um, I'm not saying like it bothers you, but I'm saying in my church, like maybe people are bothered because, okay, so I'll give you an example, like that one girl who like had those terrible nightmares. And, oh, I, I don't even think, I think I finished that story, but basically I tested the spirit and then all of a sudden like one guy was like, oh my gosh, I see a demon and it's standing up in my living room. It's red and like, get that thing out of here. And then the other girl was like, oh my gosh, I feel it. It's so dark. And I'm just sitting there and like, I'm trying not to laugh because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, kind of like they're freaking out. But then I'm like, dude, this thing's going to go. Like, we're going to get rid of it, you know? Um, because because uh, I think the reason why I'm like kind of chipper, uh, I hope it's not too off-putting, but um, I think what's exciting is like to see how quickly they fold and fall. Um, they're kind of, they're, they're, well, not, they're not more than kind of, they're, they're rather pathetic. Um, it's amazing how like something can have such a hold on someone and then you kind of walk through the process and then uh, you, you just have the person, you know, basically command these things to leave and they'll be gone very quickly. Um, so I think what's really exciting is just the way God can deliver and bring freedom to someone, especially when they feel really helpless. Obviously, the thing to keep in mind is Luke 10, you know, it says, don't rejoice that the demons are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. So um, that's the key component is just to remember that we are God's children. Um, but at the same time, like, I, I think it, it, it is very, uh, man, it's, it's so cool to see people be free, like, um, and just see how God can, can change people's lives. Um, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, the power of, of, of Jesus. And it's, it's all about what he does. So. Yeah, um, good question, <laughs> yeah. Okay, any others? No, I guess we'll go to breakout groups. I have a question. Okay. Um, so what happens when, like I've tried asking um, whatever evil spirit to reveal itself, but it hasn't, hmm. but the effects are still there. Got it. So what would you suggest in that instance? Hmm. So I'd say, 
Because mm. there is, the, okay, so I guess there are different philosophies on whether someone can do their own inner healing. And I think you can. Um, but for some reason, I've noticed that as well. I've noticed that as well, that for some reason, it seems to be more difficult, like to actually remove what's going on. Um, so I don't know precisely why that is. I just know that oftentimes in prayer with multiple people, um, sometimes there, there's more clarity with that. Or um, I guess for whatever situation that is, I mean, I guess whatever, whatever has led to kind of that moment of uh, this thing being able to influence you, because um, there are different types of spirits. So that can also, also be an indicator of like what, what you're going through. So usually if someone says, oh, I, ha I, I, I really struggle with hating people. Okay, uh, spirit of hate, I command you to re reveal yourself in the name of Jesus. And sometimes like there'll be like a legit uh, you know, re revelation or manifestation of that spirit. So um, yeah, I would just recommend like maybe just getting maybe a, a few people to pray for you and, and kind of work through that. And um, yeah, because I've, I've tried, yeah, yeah, two or three were gathered. Um, so the, I, I, I've tried what you, what you've just said, uh, Melissa, for myself. And for some reason, yeah, it's just uh, uh, like having other people's kind of like a mirror, they can, they can really provide like some more clarity uh, as to what's happening. So yeah, great question. Any other last minute questions? Hi. Um, we talked a lot about engaging um, in spiritual matters and that there is a lot of, you said, philosophies, ways of going about this in the spiritual realm in terms uh -huh. of tackling it. But in regards of interpretation, when someone is trying to listen to the Lord and try to give a word, do you guys ever go through a sense of how do you verify when someone's hearing from the Lord or just speaking their mind, mm. do you guys have a sense of accountability or mm. mindfulness and how you just dive into this? Cause tapping into the spiritual realm um, sounds great and all just cause you know about the Holy spirit, but you could tap into a very wrong spirit. Mm. So I'm yeah, just curious to know question. what your take on that is. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's probably, a Hey David, you're probably gonna have to re-clarify that question. A lot of people couldn't hear Tim. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so basically the question is um, basically a, one of discernment. You know, how do we really know if God is speaking? Um, and, and yeah, that is true. I mean, just because someone's walking closely with the Lord doesn't necessarily mean everything they hear is going to be from God. Um, I mean, just take Jesus, for example. You know, he was tempted in every way. So even though he is God, right? So um, so I think, I think discernment is super important. Like um, just because so someone may have a quote unquote like prophetic gifting um, or, you know, maybe, you know, maybe there's, there's some sort of impression we get in prayer. Um, yeah, test all things by scripture, definitely got to test it. Um, but usually what happens is, um, so we never say like, if we, if we get an impression from God, we never say thus saith the Lord. That's always like a no, no. Um, because the only way you can say thus saith the Lord is if you read the Bible. Okay. So never say thus saith the Lord, unless it's the Bible. Um, but what you can do is uh, something like, at, pose that as a question, you know, okay, so I'll, I'll give you an example. So, so one thing that happened was we were praying for a guy and, he, you know, we, you know we, we were praying over him at a worship night and I got the word weary in my mind. I got, okay, weary. Okay, uh, you know, uh, Josh, do you feel weary? And he's like, yeah. I, I, and then right after that, someone was like, oh, I had this scripture already. And it was, you know, it was talking about, wing, you know, uh, you know, the Eagles passage, like wings on Eagles or things like Eagles or whatever, Isaiah 40. So, so that whole thing like kind of coincided. So that was almost kind of like a confirmation. Um, so sometimes you'll see a lot of like confirmations. Uh, what we've noticed is in prayer time, if multiple people do have a prophetic gifting, um, there will many times be the exact same image given to someone. Uh, and so like, they'll be like, I got the picture of a seed growing in, it's like this. And this one's like, I got the exact same thing. That's crazy. Or um, that'll happen a lot. Uh, or at least it has happened. I mean, not a lot, a lot, but like um, a fair amount, or at least like different, um, com different illustrations that communicate sort of the same sort of concept. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And also uh, discernment of spirits. Usually what happens too is if we were pranks for someone um, and we're like testing the spirits and they're like, yeah, there's definitely something there. And then 
actually, sometimes, well, actually many times we've been praying, they'll actually tell me what the demons are saying. So I know it sounds crazy, but there'll be like, yeah, they're, they're saying this. And then the other person who has that, that same gifting, they're like, yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're saying this, they're laughing, they're, they're, you know, pointing to this. And it's just like, okay, well, then we'll just go with that. But because I can't detect any of that. Um, so that's how we kind of work through some of that. Um, and yeah, you know, obviously, you know, don't, don't treat everything as like with the same authority as the Bible, but um, keep asking the person questions and clarification. And then if they're like, yeah, that totally speaks to me then it's like okay well let's just roll with that you know um yeah that's a phenomenal question thanks okay cool um yeah so if you guys uh want to go ahead into breakout rooms i guess we'll go for that i had a few questions um i sent to nathan and we'll uh we'll go from there so yeah thanks guys for um listening to to some of that and um yeah sorry zoom isn't uh it's like a hard platform for me because i feel always like antsy and i'm i don't know uh it's like hard to navigate some of the material on zoom for me but um thanks for just kind of listening and asking really good questions yeah thank you david and let's all um do a virtual clap real clap and uh thank david for his time <laughs> and his experiences and really helping us navigate through some of those deeper issues as we've been kind of going through different levels of spiritual warfare. Um, and so thank you, David, for sharing that and really hearing about a lot of the, the victory that's taken place by you. Um, and not saying that you knew what you were doing right from the beginning, right? But just willing to at least look at the Bible as your guide and, and step out to be able to bring, by through the power of Christ, bring freedom to others and, and seeing that that's been fruitful in your church. So um, yeah. amen to that. And, and thank you for sharing that with us. So what yeah. we're going to do now is uh, we have those five questions. Make sure you get those. We're going to go into uh, breakout rooms here. Uh, we could probably go to maybe 910, 915, the latest. Um, but re let's really dive into these, into these questions and, and share with one another. And I know that there's a few of us that are new. So be sure to introduce yourselves and because, hey, we're all, we're all in this together as the body of Christ and we need to be there for one another. Okay, so let's, let's all do that and we'll see you back.